Ladies and gentlemen. Hardcore hell was not the knot of the program. But that is okay. Because you can find victory in a loss. You see, the program since Hardcore Hell, we, we have been regrouping. We have been refocusing. We have been doing what it takes to find that victory in those losses. And the victory is this. You get to watch us climb the ladder once again. You get to watch us on our journey to gold once again. You get to watch us take the throne of anarchy once again. Because tonight, Hunter James, you are getting your NCW Junior Heavyweight Championship back. And Brock, not only are you going to be the last anarchy television champion ever, but you are gonna be the inaugural champion of whatever they've got. So guys, like the great Miley Cyrus said, and one of the greatest songs of not only our time, but all time, it's not what's waiting on the other side, it's the climb. And we are going to... Hardcore hell Proved too much for the man Too much for the man He lost two titles He's the biggest scrub On two different shows And now the program Program's got to find What is left of their pride just like I found an empty stroller Out by the side of the road And now I'm leaving Even With the best tag team in Georgia Even with the best tag team Scott Mason's going back Going back to find Himself at the back of the Whenever he takes that ride, I'll have two titty babies right by his yes, side. I'll be with them. I know you will. We're the best tag team in Georgia. Undeniable best tag team in Georgia. Woo-hoo! Take the heat. Cause all we can do is shine. If they know what's good for them, they'll stay their asses home. Back to anarchy and back to the people. And while you three bums look like you picked your clothes out of a hamper, we have come out here immaculately dressed and we have our very own a unicorn. So Cornelia, Georgia, please join me and let them know exactly who is the best tag team in a Georgia. And I am leaving with 
have the best tag team in Georgia. The program can take the heat. Cause all we gon' do is shine. All we gon' do is shine. All we gon' do is Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a letter match for the NCW Junior Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He weighs 207 pounds. He's representing the program he is Mr. Absolutely Varsity, Hunter James. And his opponent, from San Antonio, Texas, weighing in tonight at 195 pounds. He is the reigning, the defending, NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion, Landmark Arena Hall of Famer. And for the last time, 
win, lose, or draw, this is the technician, Todd Sexton. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to another episode of Anarchy Wrestling here at the Landmark Arena. Michael Gentry here alongside my new broadcast partner here. My name and is Blake Blackwell. Black Blake, and we are ready to kick off tonight's action with an NCW Junior Heavyweight Championship ladder match. Right here, a special feature of NCW here on Anarchy Wrestling as we saw at NCW just last week, these two men competed in a 30-minute Ironman match that ended in a 4-4 draw tie, which means Todd Sexter retained the championship, but there was no decisive winner. Hunter James came to me and asked for one more championship opportunity. It was granted to him, but there has to be a winner. So tonight, no pinfalls, no submissions. It is simply the first man to, who's able to climb a ladder to the top Grab the title, we'll walk away, NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion, Blake. And you know, Gentry, you heard it during the, the introduction speech. He said that he is not the challenger here. He still firmly believes he's the champion. I mean, you saw in the 30-minute Ironman match, he came out with the belt spray-painted on his tights. He doesn't think he ever lost it in the first place. Uh, clearly, it was said by referee's decision, he had lost at Hardcore Hell 24 on night one there. And as you see Todd Sexton take Hunter James over the top rope. Did you hear the thud of the barricade when he went over the top, just back first? Yeah, Brutal. Hit, hit hard on the outside there as Proc Johnston and Scott Mu Scott there tried to uh, keep Hunter, get him sort of grouped up back in this matchup here as we go on here. Again, what a way to kick off Anarchy Wrestling here tonight. The very important ladder match as we see Hunter James now take uh -oh. takes Todd. Todd sets it up. Slingshot, right but he ladder. catches himself. Go, climbs up the ladder. Double axe handle off the ladder down to the outside on the Hunter James. He hit that flush. Yeah, clean shot right there. And now Todd Sexton with the ladder. Holding up, looks like he's going to take it into the ring. He wants to try to grab this title, walk out of here. It's his last match here in the Landmark Arena as champion here. You know Todd and the people here in the, of the Landmark Faithful would love nothing more to see him walk into the, or right into the Sunset Championship in hand. But that's everything the program are trying to stop. And Hunter James and, and the rest of the program doing whatever they can. And oh, what a shot! With the ladder right to the nether regions of Hunter James. And now he's wedged into the barricade here in front of us. Uh-oh. And uh -oh. now Todd Sexton with open season on Hunter James's face. Folks who, folks who have followed Anarchy have all said that Hunter James has such a punchable face. And Todd Sexton is proving that true here tonight. He is taking the dream of everyone in this arena of getting to punch Hunter James in the face. Repeatedly. Yeah, like you were saying, win, lose, or draw. This is Todd Sexton's last match here in the Landmark Arena. Just he's set to retire in about a week or so from the taping of this, and we are going to see, we're witnessing his very last match and a historic career here in the Landmark Arena. Question simply, will he be able to walk out as junior heavyweight champion tonight? We shall see as he now sets up at the ring, but here comes Hunter James from behind with a clubbing blow to the back. Todd's in a precarious position. Backed up into that ladder, now into the corner. Oh! Hard shot into the ladder there. Hunter James really putting the hurt on Todd Sexton here on this one. I mean, you could see the way he just bounced off of that ladder, the, the recoil of slamming into it so hard. That was brutal. Now, Hunter seems to be measuring him for something. Oh no, is he gonna try to, try to go for a bulldog, but no, Todd Sexton puts him right on the ladder in a very bad spot. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And now, oh! Oh, tops the ladder on top of him, really bending that leg at an awkward angle there. Really, could really hurt him on this one. Hunter's lucky he didn't get crotched by the ladder and then at any point in that, just 
very lucky, but his knee was, did not suffer the same. Did not have yeah, the same he, luck. He is not feeling it right now at all. And now, uh oh, Sexton up to the second turnbuckle with the ladder. What's he thinking here? He climbs his way to the top, ladder in position, and now full force on top. Ooh, oh, and no my one. God. Oh. He tries to crash the ladder on Hunter James, but Hunter wisely moving out of the way before the ladder could impact. Did you see Todd mouth first on that top rung of that ladder, just bouncing off of it? Uh, yep. Just vicious. As Hunter taking this moment to breathe and check on his knee and make sure everything's still intact down there. Yeah, this this is the danger of ladder matches, folks. Is like as much damage as you can do to your opponent with a ladder, you try anything with it, you could very well get yourself hurt. And that's what both of these men are suffering from right here. This is one of the few matches where every single move you do here is high risk, high reward. Yeah, and now both uh -oh. men splitting it up. There you go, both men climbing up now to the top of the ladder. And now it's just a will of punches here. as They each take a shot at each other on the top of the ladder here. Uh-oh. Todd Six. Has him locked up. Hunter James now fighting out of it. Sends Todd De crashing to the mat. Hunter, Hunter cannot reach the title, though. He's too far back. You see Scott and Brock holding the uh, ladder to try to, to add some stability. And as he climbs around, still out, just out of arm's reach of the championship. And now what's Hunter James thinking? Comes off the top. Ooh. No one home. The pool was dry. Misses wildly on that move. <laughs> you can hear Hunter. Uh, you can hear Hunter James screaming out. That, I mean, that had to at least been from ten feet in the air. That very easily could have broken a rib or worse. Yeah, he is now wor a lot worse for wear here. He is down. Todd Sexton back up to his feet. Now trying to reposition the ladder, get a little closer. So he can take his championship and walk into the sunset, as you said, as retire here from the Landmark Arena as NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion. But maybe he's got more ill intent advised here. He's now uh, trying to hook Hunter James up. Oh, uh, up into a, a gory bomb type maneuver. No, he's not. Oh, my God. Both these men. Come on, talking about cracking uh, a rib. Oh! And could not get it to connect completely. Both but men crashing back down to the mat. If anything, that might have been worse. You see, he, he, Todd wanted him to to, to to enter the ribs to, to, to land stomach first, but Hunter able to slip out and put his legs down, but that could have ended up hurting him worse in the end. Obviously, he hurt, he hurt that knee earlier, and that definitely did not help. And now Todd Sexton has maneuvered the ladder almost directly under the championship belt. But Hunter James, seeing that his championship chances are in trouble here, trying to attack Todd Sexton any way he can, but still suffering from that damage he took to his knee earlier in this match. Todd Sexton now climbing the ladder. Look, he's favoring his back. And now Hunter James, with last ditch effort, grabs the leg, keeps Sexton away from the championship. Now gets him up. Powerbomb type maneuver. Possibly for a slingshot. Powerbomb. He hits Rebound, it. Rebound powerbomb right there. Hunter James L gets Todd Sexton down to the mat. And now with an opportunity to reclaim what he says he never lost, but clearly did. The thing with Hunter is it's one thing to put Todd down, but with that injured knee, it's a whole other fight just getting back to his feet and getting up that ladder. He's fighting a major uphill battle here with that knee injury. Yeah, one, one good knee here. Hunter James, at Mr. Absolutely Varsity, trying to reclaim some gold for the program and himself, Try, climbing the ladder nearly just a couple rungs away from reclaiming the championship. But Todd Sexton now back up, and now drops him down face first right into a cross face. What a, that is just the absolute craftiness of, of Todd Sexton. And to yank him off into a, a dust till dawn, and now Hunter James tapping, but th that means nothing in a ladder match. Yeah, no pinfalls, no submissions. The only way this match ends is by somebody grabbing the championship from above the ring here. Hunter James can tap till the cows come home. It means absolutely nothing in this matchup. Todd now perhaps looking to make the climb once more. Hunter obviously feeling the effects of that cross face. And now Todd Sexton 
inside the ropes. The only man there trying to regain some feeling in his legs as he tries to climb his way up, trying to reach it rung by rung, trying to get closer to that NCW Junior Heavyweight Championship. He's got fingertips on it, and Hunter James with the last second off the top rope comes in and hits Todd Sexton in the back of the head there, knocking him off the ladder and saving his championship opportunities. Did you see where he placed those double axe handles as well, right on the top of the spine, trying to inflict more damage to that already injured back? I mean, both of these men, this match hasn't been going on for very long, but due to just the sheer brutality of a ladder match and the, the animosity between these two, both men more hurt than possibly they were at the end of the Iron Man match. Yeah, and as we saw that 30-minute classic at NZW, watching these men end up in a tie there. It's Hexen rolling through the rolling through the ladder and now super kicks the ladder right into Hunter James's face. Talk about ring awareness. Talk about just that straight innovation by the technician himself. And now repositioning the ladder again now. Set up all alone in the ring once again. Todd Sexton climbing up, inching closer and closer to that championship. Todd fighting that that injured back though, trying to fight through the pain, grit his teeth and get the title. And now here comes Hunter James off the top. Both men fighting there, now pushed above the ladder right in the ring. Hard shots left and right from both men. Hunter James trying to put a hand on the title. Now almost, Todd Sexton almost falls off there. There he goes, the shot off the top rope. Hunter James knocks him over. Hunter's all by himself on the top of the ladder. Victory is literally inches away from him now. And but in classic Hunter fashion, taking the time to gloat and to showboat. And wait, Town Sexton with the ladder, tipping it over. Oh! Oh my goodness! Hunter James not only landing on the second rope, but having the ladder hit him upside the head as well. Brilliant save by Todd Sexton there. A two for one special on that one. Krochkin. As you can hear, the landmark faithful yelling for Todd. They, they're all behind the technician himself. They want to see him retire as NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion. But wait, here comes Mason. Trying to save the jam. And super kick to Scott Mason. Watch out on the other side. Prox got Hunter on his, and on his oh, shoulder. And, and Hunter yanks the title down. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. And new in CW Junior Heavyweight Champion, Hunter James. Give the assist where it's due. The program does it and helps Hunter James once again become NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion. In the first match in this epic trilogy, the program were nowhere to be found. In the Iron Man match, the program were nowhere to be found. But once the program stuck their head into their business, Hunter James walks away with a title. Put an asterisk next to his name. Put an asterisk next to this reign. It's not how you want to see it happen. But Gentry, to your credit, we had to have a winner, and a winner we have. And we have it here. Hunter James is the new NCW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Gentlemen, Glenn Mark Arena, Hall of Famer, Todd Sexton!
And here we are, singles action now. We On one side, we have Skrilla the Great taking on a undefeated Nick Halen here in Anarchy Wrestling. You know, you can hear it during his entrance, Nick Halen shouting best wrestler here. And I absolutely think he has a, a claim to be the best wrestler in Georgia. I mean, the man has been on an incredible streak over the past year, year and a half, and especially an incredible streak here in the Landmark Arena. Yeah, over a year not being pinned or submitted here inside the Landmark Arena ring, here in Anarchy Wrestling, he has been on an um, unprecedented winning streak here in Anarchy, going all the way back to Hardcore Hell 24, where we saw a, rest, a absolute classic match between him and Sal Renaro. I mean, that match was incredible, and this one has all the makings to be a classic as well. Skrilla, no uh, easy task for Nick Halen. You know, several appearances here on Anarchy, always impressive in every performance. Nick may have his hands full with this one. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's been challenged here. Everyone has, seems like they're coming out of the woodworks to come take their best shot at Nick Halen to disprove his fact that he's the best wrestler in Anarchy. And again, he's got another tough task here, like you said here with Skrilla the Great. Nick taking things slow to start off, you know, putting in holds, working Skrilla to the ground, but Skrilla working his way over to the ropes each time. Skrilla being just out-wrestled by Nick Halen. And again, it's hard to say with the winning streak he has been on, the, the names he has beaten, he's literally anybody who's been put in front of him over the last year has lost to Nick Halen inside the ring here. And tonight he's looking to add Skrilla's name to that long list of victories here. Skrilla seems to have the upper hand now, locking in that headlock tight. Just wrenching back and now. A bit of fancy spinning from Skrilla, showing Nick that he's not the only one who can work technical around here. And, and almost the disrespect there as, as he's showing off here in front of Nick Halen. Give him a little dose of his own medicine here. So I think each other up once more. Nick gets the upper hand. Big takedown. And now returning the favor to Skrilla, stepping over him. They're stepping on the back there to Skrilla, they're great. And now a little jaw jacking going on here is now shoves off and a big <laughs> hard right hand there by Nick Halen. When push comes to shove, Nick decides to punch. The right. massive arm drag there. there you go. Hip toss. Halen now just sort of staring Skrilla down, sends him to the outside. And now here comes Nick, Nick, Nick Halen faking the flyover. And Skrilla moves out of the way. But then really doesn't realize that Nick hadn't jumped yet. And there he goes over the top rope, landing right on top of Skrilla. That is why you never turn your back on Nick Halen. Nick is seemingly always one step ahead of you. Anytime you think you've got the upper hand, he's probably already got you pinned before you even know it. And again, that veteran mindset that Nick Halen's had from his years of wrestling here in the Landmark Arena really being put on full display here. And now as he takes Skrilla to the corner with Ooh. a big knife edge chop. Nick sends Skrilla to the other corner, but a reversal. Big knee to the midsection. And a ripcord uh, sling blade, I believe. Yes. Very inventive offense here from Skrilla. Like I said, Nick has faced a lot of people, a lot of very unique people, you know, to mention Sal Renaro at the last hardcore hell. But Skrilla, very unique in his own right, in his style and his offense. But if anyone's got a game plan for it, it's probably Nick. But I don't think there's very much game plan for taking a chop like that from Skrilla. Yeah, except other to find a way to get out of the corner. But Nick Halen just now just trying to punch his way out. Not working very well as Skrilla still now has him up. Cravat locked in and now off the, off the ropes. Big drop kick there as he lows down. Goes for the cover. Only gets a two count. It's going to take a lot more to put Nick Halen down. You can back Nick Halen into a corner, but... Like a wounded dog, he will keep fighting. If he is cornered, he will fight until he cannot fight anymore. So you have to bring, I don't know if there's anything bigger than an A game or greater than an A game, but that's what you got to bring to beat Nick Halen. And now Skrill got chinlock, rear chinlock apply. There is now as Nick Halen gets back to his feet. Hard shots to the midsection and now misses on the clothesline, misses again. 
Oh, and a big bad Boy. elbow there. Sends Nick Halen crashing to the mat quickly. Goes for the cover, too. Kick out at two. Nick was completely blindsided by that back elbow. You could see the, the, the sweat flying off of him just with that massive impact. Caught Seems him. caught him right on the bridge of the nose. Yeah, caught him off guard. And now looks like Skrilla, all oh, hands, fingers right into the eyes there. Skrilla not taking any more of the nonsense from Nick Halen here. Now really going to work, trying to blind Halen. He goes for a cover again. Only gets a two count. But see that right onto a headlock. Skrilla incredibly aggressive. Nick picked out of the pin, but Skrilla fell right into that side headlock, not giving Nick even a, a, a second to breathe. And now he's got him down on the mat. Headlock applied deep right under the chin. Looks like the chin lock sort of, again, laying down, really trying to crank that pressure in from behind. But Halen now finding a way to get back to his feet. Now setting up, try to release, but no, Skrilla quickly grabbing the head, throwing him back down to the mat. Only gets a two count there. Skrilla is matching Nick's crafty nature with just pure aggression, and so far it is working. As Nick definitely on the ropes. Let's talk about aggressive. Did you see the way you could just see that boot scrape off his back? That was vicious. And now Chogi Mal using that middle rope, using the full extent of the referee's five count there. Skrilla making no mistake. There's one thing Skrilla does not lack in his confidence, telling the crowd, uh, crowd that it is his show. And now kid to the midsection here, Skrilla, looking to try to put Nick Hale in away here, setting up. Skrilla calling for the end, saying it's over. Uh, He's got to get Nick up first. Blocking the, blocking the suplex here. Let's pick him up again. The reversal of fortune here, Halen back to his feet. Just really trying to wear him down. Can he get him up? Up and over. Nick Halen gets out of it. And now tries to go for the German. Gets oh. it. He hit every bit of that German. With full extension on it, too. And there's the kip up. Halen ready for the fight now. It's almost like he's got new life breathed into him here. Talk about a second win. Skrilla trying to... Fight back to his feet, but I guarantee you he won't like what he sees when he turns around. And that is Nick Halen with fire in his eyes. Big clothesline there now. Setting up. Up oh. and over. Big back body drop. Halen keeping up the attack, responding, or returning the aggression that Skrilla showed him in the first half of this match. And now he's got his hands trying to set up the game break, but he's got the referee rabbled in there as well. And now trying to, and finds a way to get out of it there. He just grabbed the tights and, and, and sort of guillotine choked Nick on that top rope straight to the Adam's apple, possibly crushing the windpipe. And if the rope didn't, that uppercut right to the jaw might have. There it is again, right on the money. Skrill looking like trying to put it away, but here comes Nick Halen going for a backslide pin. I was down one, two. Skrilla rolls through and hits the drop kick. Nick is back on the ropes once more. Skrilla showing an incredible amount of aggression here. Setting up now on his shoulders here. Drops him down. Will that be enough? Two count there. Skrilla thought he had it there, but on fell just short here for the three count. Like Nick I said earlier in the match, Nick it will not stop fighting under any circumstance. It's, it's, you said he's not been pinned in a year, and I can see why. What would it take to put this man down? And can Skrilla find it before the end of the match? I don't know, but here comes Nick Halen. Grab it in there. Drops him out. Oh, incredible STO. Sends Skrilla down the, not, the mat. Now Nick Halen sort of springboarding himself to the top rope. Now going for the elbow drop. Gets it all. Will that be it? Hooks the leg. One, two, three, and that's it. Who is your winner? Nick Halen. The winning streak for Nick Halen continues here at Anarchy Wrestling.
Wait a minute. They're in the ring now. It's the Landmark Arena Heritage Champion, Joe Black. Is this thing on? Yes, it is. What's up, Cornelia? say something right now so it's crystal clear I'm looking you in your eyes man to man you are one of the best damn wrestlers in this state but also let me make another point crystal clear I am the best damn wrestler in this state now you wanted Sal Renaro, and you considered him to be the best. Now, I love Sal, I've learned a lot from him, and I know you have as well. But a group of your peers, those same guys in the back that you, hey, Bubba, hey, brother, love you, family, all that too, they voted me to be the best. So I felt a little bit slighted by that, but that's okay. That's fine. You see, both of us, we're two approved guys, right? We learned from one of the absolute best ever in Jimmy Rave. And that is why, usually, this is the gimmick, right? You call a champion out, he comes out here, he said, well, you know, kid, I don't think you've earned it yet. Maybe if you prove yourself next month, I ain't one of those type of dudes. So instead of you laying out a challenge, how about a champion challenges you? Wait a minute. So what do y'all think about that? Nick Haley versus Joe Black. I want to see it. Yeah. I think that'll be a wrestling classic. But you see, Nick, we're too good for a victory to be decided in one match. I saw what you did with Naja, you know, best of seven, right? I'm going to be honest, man. I'm 35. I'm not trying to wrestle you seven times. So... Three is a biblical number. How about we have a, we have three matches. Whoever wins two matches, Nick, is the new landmark heritage champion. What say you? Joe, for that title in this building, it'd be my honor. It's official. We're going to have a best of three series for the Landmark Arena Heritage Championship. Joe Black versus Nick Halen.
And as the bell rings, we continue on here. Singles action once again here. On one side, we have Javier Reyes joining us here at Anarchy Wrestling, taking on Nogicism. You know, I'm not going to shock anyone by saying this, that Nogicism is not the biggest wrestler in the world. He's made a career out of taking down Giants, but I don't think he's ever encountered someone quite like the Peruvian Pitbull, Javier Reyes. Someone his size, someone his stature, and most importantly, someone his athleticism. Yeah, I'm going to say, he definitely has a tall challenge here in this one. The exotic import himself, Javier Reyes, taking on a man who we saw at Hardcore Hell 24 compete in a big ladder match here to try to earn an opportunity. To take, to take an opportunity here to try to gain the title shot we're going to see a little bit later on here tonight. Now Reyes and Nagisism sizing each other up. Reyes getting him to the top rope with ease. And an almost insulting rub to the head. Yes, and I apologize for this Xavier Reyes on this one here. And now he goes big chop right to the chest. And now... Here comes Nodgesism, kicks in, hard shot right in the face. Here he goes off the ropes, quicker than a hiccup, through the legs, and now big spinning heel kick. Sends him up off the second rope, trying to drag through, but wait a minute, Reyes too strong for him. Picks Nodgesism square up, up on his shoulders, trying to send, thinking for a power bomb, but Nodgesism with the head scissors sends him to the outside. Xavier Reyes on the outside now trying to catch his breath, but here comes Nogicism. Uh-oh. Plucked out of thin air by Reyes. I must say again, man's too strong for Nogicism here and just dumps him back in the ring unceremoniously here. He just tossed him through the bottom rope, and now, oh, my oh God. Oh, straight over the ring steps there. Nogicism just full-on dive right onto Reyes there, and now... I don't Our think Reyes was expecting a fight like this. Oh, what a double stop square to the back. Just where Reyes thought he had added the overcome easily. Here comes Nodgesism very quickly back in this match there. Oh, wait a minute. Reyes now grabbing the boot. And now spinning heel kick now. Nodgesism trying to figure out what he's got to do to take him down. If there's yeah. one way to take him down, it's... Kicks to the legs, chop down the base of the tree, but oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> Good night, Gracie. What a clothesline there. But somehow Nodgesism, with any sort of wherewithal, manages to kick out at two. That very well could have just been pure instinct. I'm not sure Naja knows where he is right now. Yeah, and in this case, Reyes there with a full on, just looks like Sahel is trying to punch him down. He tried to put his feet on the bottom ropes to get more leverage, put more weight on Nodgesism's neck and try to, to, to cut the, the airflow. Let me see you now. Walking around and now. As, hold on one moment. Scott Mason has joined here at ringside. Looking on this match here as Reyes goes for a pinfall. One, two, kick out by Nodgesism. I mean, what, what purpose does Scott Mason have out here for this match? I don't know. He, he, said, he said before Hardcore Hell that he wasn't interested in, look, in scouting more talent to join the program. be interesting to see if he may find something in Mr. Reyes here or Nodgesism possibly. Big kick to the side of the head. Nodgesism off the second rope. But right once again plucked out of the air by Reyes. Xavier now about to put Nodgesism in the world of hurt, dropping him on the knee there. And straight up and over. Massive fall away slam, almost throwing Nodgesism clean out of the ring. Xavier Reyes now in full, con full control of this matchup here. I think that control was just shattered by that massive kick right to the jaw. But Javier, uh, excuse me, Xavier Reyes returns with one of his own. And now just putting all of his weight right there on Nodgesism's neck. Easily, he has enough pressure, he could snap the neck real easily here. Not careful. And now, really just 
grinding in the knee right into the face. Trying to blind Nagicism here. I mean, it's not very, not very pleasant to have 265 pounds of Peruvian pit bull on your face. It yes. And there the exotic import with the suplex, but now still holding on to it. Sets him up once again for the second in a row. Maybe shades of the Guerreros here. Maybe going for the three amigos. No, hits him up. Straight down one, two. And Nodgesism out of pain, I think he kicked out on that one. I mean, you see how tall Xavier Reyes is. I mean, well over six feet and then some. That massive falcon arrow on those, that three amigos just, that would be like falling from a solid eight feet. So if he there, but now quickly, Nodgesism has him in the submission. It looks like triangle choke applied, really trying to put the pressure down. But Reyes too strong and breaks it up, slamming Nodgesism back to the mat. Now look at this. Xavier Reyes locking in a dragon sleeper on Nodgesism. Uh-oh, Nodgesism fading fast on this one. He's trying to stay alive here. And now, knees right there to Reyes' face here. Nodgesism feels trying to fight up. Reyes loses Nodgesism. Running punch right there. Now Nodgesism going for it again. Shotgun drop kick now. Frolovitz slides under. Oh, oh my lord! Goodness, did you hear the crack on that spinning heel? Xavier Reyes, a second time right to the jaw. And down yep. goes the tree. But only a two count. Reyes still in this matchup. Very close, two cracking spinning heel kicks there. The side of Reyes' face, almost one not just this in the match. But now, as he gets perched on the top rope, here comes Xavier to the top, climbing up with him. They're battling on the turnbuckles here. Not just as creating some separation, goes up quickly, frog splash! He caught all of it. But still, only a two count. Reyes is still in this match somehow. The pure athleticism on display by the exotic import himself, showing out here against a very gay Nodgesism here. I like to make mention Scott Mason still at ringside scouting someone in this match. Drops him down. Xavier Reyes rolls over for the pin. Only gets a two count. The pain, this match really taking its toll on Naja. Hard for him to straighten up. Xavier Reyes charging in, trying to tell Nodgesism to stay down. Misses, drives his shoulder into the hard steel post. Nodgesism with an opportunity here to try to put Reyes away. Nodgesism trying to get his balance first. Massive knee to the side of the head. Then knocked him unconscious. Now, walking the tight ropes. Scott Mason jumping up, trying to interfere in the match maybe. Catches Nodgesism off guard and now. Massive slam. Goes for down. the cover. Two. And, and Reyes has got him. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Javier Riyad. Xavier Riyad, they're picking up the win here over Nodgesism. Give a little assist to the coach of the program, Scott Mason. I think it's clear to see who Scott was scouting at the beginning of the match.
at this time, please welcome the Commissioner of Anarchy Wrestling. Oh, oh I am yeah. too strong. Two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Too Strong. I demand silence! I have a list of grievances that I need to discuss with one man! Shut up! Get your butt out here right now! Mr. Too Strong, I'm right here. O'Rourke, I don't know what you have against me, but it ends tonight. Shut up! I have nothing against you. You have, no you have nothing against me. Well, Exhibit A, when that bully magicism jumped off of that top rope, landed on my neck with a chair between it, you didn't send one referee, one medical officer, no one. But, but, yeah. but, when little baby Will Caution does it, you send everyone out. Not only that, I'm not done talking. Not only that, when I wasn't medically cleared, you put me in a hellacious match that I was this close this close of winning. And then that bully, cruel, threw me off the top of this ladder and to the outside and hurt my two innocent sweet baby boys. So with all those being said, I demand an apology. Apologize. Guys, guys. You want an apology? Okay, well. Jay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you feel that you need medical attention after you come out here week in and week out and profess that you are uh, wh wh what does he say that he is, folks? Too sweet. Yeah, that's what I thought. You come out here and you profess to be uh, too strong. So I just assume that, well, being we're all athletes here, that you can handle yourself just fine. You don't need my medical assistance. And speaking of medical assistance, I'm sorry to tell you that I have been calling all week to verify with your doctor, Sansbury Knifen, who's an excellent doctor. Doc, he's, he's been very busy. He's and been that, very busy. Well, that's what I understand because I've been calling and calling and calling with no answer, no voicemail, 
no nothing. So that just leaves me unable to verify that, well, you're unable to wrestle. And I'm sure when push comes to shove, you... <laughs> so, okay, well, just collect your thoughts. Maybe loosen this up because since, since I can't verify that you're unable to compete, you're just going to have to be and wrestle right here with my opponent that I have for you. Good luck, brother. You're going to like this one. Oh. I don't even got my gear on. I'm in a thousand dollar suit. You can't do this to me. This match, one fall to a finish. Jay Too Strong versus Jacob Ashworth. And you heard it from the commissioner right there, unable to verify that Jay Too Strong is actually injured and unable to compete. So forcing him into his matchup here against a, a former Anarchy Heavyweight Champion, the unstoppable Jacob Ashworth. You know, this match will definitely prove whether or not Jay is too strong or too weak because he has one of the biggest competitions he's, he's ever faced. You know, Jacob Ashworth, an absolute legend in this building. He's main evented more anarchy uh, shows than any other person in the history of this building. Yes. Jay has all of the cards stacked against him, and that's not even including the possibly legitimate injury. Yeah, Jacob Ashworth, again, been in this business, started off as a security guard, working his way to become a referee, eventually become, turning into a competitor, and now has head, headlined probably more hardcore hells than any other man here in Landmark Arena history here. And these two are getting ready to battle it out here as the bell rings and J2 Strong quickly running to the outside. They thought about maybe escaping through the entranceway, but uh, ran into Jacob Ashworth. And now, hard shots there, and now both these men fighting on the outside here. Sends him all back right into the barricade there. Jacob Ashworth now. Oh, oh my God. God. Cracking the back against the barricade wall. All the, the brutality of it all here. Now getting a little sort of coaching there from Michael Rourke on the outside. There you go. Now the bell's officially rung. We are underway here. Big arm drags by Jacob Ashworth. Jacob Ashworth just ringing. Just sending him through the ringer with all these slams and now leaving him up there for quite some time, letting the blood rush to his head before slamming him down again. And then quickly dropping it down, dropping the elbow. Right on J2 Strong, goes for the cover quickly, one, two. And a kick out from Mr. Too Strong himself. I'll show you, it takes a lot of power uh, in your neck to be able to kick out, so yes. I feel like we can determine what the, the, the legitimacy of the injury on that alone. But it looks like J2 Strong still finding a way to stay maneuver and complaining to Michael Rourke that he is hurt and that's it. Trying to re-secure that net brace there. Not wanting to do any more of it. Trying to walk away from this match. He's like, he doesn't want to fight at all. Does Jay intend to wrestle in the neck brace? Give himself some support. It may be the only support he has that's, that's worth anything here. But Jacob Ashford not having any of it here. Goes quickly right back on the offense here. Says J2 Strong off the side. And a big splash here by the unstoppable one. Yeah, possibly looking for a second one, but caught with a big boot to the jaw. 
Now wait. A, a neck breaker, oddly ironic, for Jay Too Strong to be delivering a neck breaker of all things. As and now Jay Too Strong patting himself on the back, seeing how good of a job he did there. That's not necessarily the actions of a quote unquote injured man, if you will. Now, speaking of injury, possibly trying to injure the Jacob Ashworth's neck, choking him on that second rope, but Asper still has a lot of fight left in him, a lot of fire still burning. As a second neck breaker. Jay Too Strong, Seedman now found a target on Jacob Ashworth's neck, trying to really hurt his own. Goes for a cover, two. Almost gets the kick, almost gets the win there, but Jacob Ashworth kicks out. I mean, as you said, Jacob Ashworth, a former Anarchy heavyweight champion, is going to take a lot more than a few neck breakers to put him down for good. They did call him unstoppable for a reason. That's not the kind of name you just give yourself like Jay Too Strong. Right. And here Jay is trying to down the office. Uh, fingers in the eyes there, raking the eyes of Ashworth. This is a classic J2 Strong throwing the, the rule book out the window with the commissioner sitting right there. Now big boot, again, targeting the neck of Jacob Ashworth and there just putting all of his weight right into it, trying to crush the larynx, if you will. Ashworth, as you can see, still fighting to his feet, still refusing to give up, still plenty of fight left in him. That shot might have took a bit of it out of him. And a second time, and there's a chop for his own, <laughs> chop for his own troubles. Man, my goodness, did you see the power that Jacob Ashworth put behind that? Even with the shirt on, you can still hear the the the, the impact. It's just a brutal sound. And now JG Strong trying to block the suplex, and now JG Strong again with a very good suplex. Need a lot of neck strength to do that. Not again, something that if he had a legit neck injury, he would be able to do in the ring. And the landmark faithful getting behind Ashworth, trying to will him back to his feet. And Jay Too Strong perhaps looking at his shoe. He's taking the boot off of his foot, and now Ashworth ducks it, however, in a big form to the back. Now setting up. Big back suplex there. Jay Too Strong really twitching. Did you see on that massive back suplex, that sheer drop suplex landing neck first. It's now the referee holding Ashworth back, checking on Jay Too Strong. Says he can't feel his, can't feel his legs. We do have our referee and our commissioner there making sure that he is okay if he were to sustain a legitimate injury in this match. And quickly drops down the jawbreaker again, attacking the head and neck of Ashworth, rolls through, stacks him up, one, two. Only a two though, as he got the feet on the middle rope to try to, to, to add more leverage to that pin, and now Michael O'Rourke had enough of J2 Strong ignoring the rule book that he said, it, that he put forth. Now sets him up. Center of the ring, Jacob Ashford has him up. Full Nelson, slam, goes to the cover. One, two, three, that's it. Here is your winner, Jacob Ashford. Shut your mouth. Now, as I promised at Hardcore Hill, I walked away 
with this championship. I also made the point to prove that Will Caution was not ready. With that being said, I'm a giving man, and tonight I just so happen to be in a giving mood. So as of right now, I am issuing an open challenge to anyone in the back that wants to come out here and challenge me for my Anarchy Heavyweight Championship. You heard the challenge right there from the champion himself. Wait, 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 wait. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Will Caution is not here tonight. And that was just my little lighthearted joke. <laughs> and he is not worthy, and he will not get a shot at my Anarchy Championship. But, shut your mouths. I'm trying to deliver something here. Shut your mouth. Wait a minute. It's been a while since we've heard this song here. By the crowd's reaction, that can only be one man. The Wild One has returned to Anarchy Wrestling. I'm sure when Jeter issued this open challenge, he wasn't expecting Billy Buck of all people to answer it. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is for the Anarchy Heavyweight Championship. This match, scheduled for one fall, introducing first the challenger from Anderson, South Carolina, weighing 227 pounds. He is the Southern Fried Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion Wild. Billy Ball. And his opponent from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 475 pounds. He is the reigning, the defending Anarchy Heavyweight Champion, Cheater. And here we go, a surprise Anarchy Heavyweight Championship matchup here tonight. Jeter feeling in the giving mood, as he said, willing to give a title shot to anyone not named Will Caution and answering the challenge, the new Southern Fried Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Wild Billy Buck himself returning back to Anarchy.
If there's one man who knows what it takes to be an Anarchy Heavyweight Champion or to be a heavyweight champion of any company, it's absolutely Wild Billy Buck. Yeah, a Grand Slam champion in his own right here, holding just about every single championship he's ever been qualified for here in Anarchy Wrestling, including a multiple-time Anarchy Heavyweight Champion. And tonight, he wants to add another reign to his long historic career. Well, he's faced many, many large men, though I don't think any have been quite the size of Jeter. Billy, you ready with that? With the buckshot super kick ready at any time here. If he nails it at any point, I'm pretty sure we're going to have ourselves a new Anarchy Heavyweight Champion here tonight. Jeter signaling to the ref to, to back him up so that he can maybe gather his thoughts. Maybe he knows just how close he was to going down with that super kick. All right. Jeter looks like he's ready to, ready to lock up. Missing Wiley, and here comes Billy Buck. Right hand swinging here, going everything he can into Jeter. But again, Jeter, so big, so powerful. One simple maneuver could easily be as devastating as like anybody's hitting in a signature move from them. And but now. All that Billy can hope to do here is just fire off moves, a flurry of offense in hopes to topple the big man. And I mean, like you said, it's, it's one move away at any point, and Jeter's got you for the pin. Yeah, now Billy Buck try, trying to use the speed tactic. He's being he gives up almost 200 pounds to Jeter here in this matchup. He's got to use his speed. He's got to use his agility. He's got to use that quickness to try to avoid oh. shots like that. All the knife edge chop bearing a hole, it feels like, into the chest of the wild one. As you said, the, the speed and the quickness of Billy Buck moving out of the way of that big splash and then returning off the ropes with a drop kick and a chop of his own. Drop kick has stunned Jeter in the corner. Billy Buck now, knife edge chop. Oh my oh. lord. <laughs> Going off like gunshots here. And now sends Billy Buck to the outside. And now, and now oh, oh good God. <laughs> And Billy Buck head just about came off his shoulders there as he gets taken off the side of the ring down to the arena floor. The referee, uh, David Weekly, out there checking on Billy Buck, making sure he is all right. Billy has laid out Jeter, maybe making chase towards him. And Billy in a world of hurt here, trying to... Get back on his feet there. Looks like he may have. It's hard to see here. Might have caused an injury. Oh, oh my oh, lord. Right on that left knee. Just dropping all of Billy Buck's weight down onto his own knee onto the, the hardest part of the ring. Just and brutal. And now really. And again, another shot to that left knee there, really taking out the knee from Billy Buck here. You can hear Billy Buck screaming in pain at just the amount of pain that he's already endured. You know, and Billy Buck already gives up several feet to Jeter. If he can't even stand on his own two feet, I mean, it's a done deal almost. But here's the big, here's the bigger threat. Jeter has targeted Billy Buck's knee here because I believe that's the leg he plants himself when he delivers the buckshot super kick. If he takes the knee out, Billy Buck's strongest weapon is Arsenal. The one he's won many championships with has been taken out of play. Billy Buck would have to find some other way to beat Jeter here tonight. With one move, Jeter has stacked the odds against Billy Buck higher than they've possibly ever been for him. But he's been, again, as you know, he's been a landmark favorite here. He has fought through many battles here. He's fought many different opponents. And he has always found a way somehow to keep himself in a match and have won in situations like this. But what happens when your, when your ace, essentially, in your hand of cards has been taken out of play? Look at this now. Oh! <laughs> Slamming the knee down. That's nearly like... 
li did you see lifted him up almost the knee was almost four feet in the air easily dropping it down right on the center of the ring he completely trying to take out that knee I think this has become less so trying to injure Billy Buck for the match and more so trying to in injure Billy Buck for good yeah I'm like it Jeter wasn't going to ever make this a fair fight between, between him. He wants to prove that he is the most dominant anarchy champion of all time. He wants to show that, like, this is his yard. This is his ring. This is his championship. And no one is ever going to be able to take it from him. Okay. Billy Buck firing off some shots. A big kick to the chest now. Off the top <laughs> rope for a sunset flip. Oh, my Lord. 400 oh. pounds right down on the chest of Billy Buck, and somehow he still kicks out. It was more than just that, 475 pounds right under the neck of Billy Buck, but Billy Buck still in the match. Somehow hanging on, like you said, a multi-time world champion. It's gonna, take a, it's gonna take more to put him down, but that was close. He's got over 20 years of experience in him, in him in his time here in professional wrestling and here in the landmark arena what will he have to draw on? what experiences does he know or what can he do here to take on a man who's twice the size of him twice the strength of him and find a way to win the anarchy championship here tonight massive chop to the chest now billy buck trying to fire off those shots as, as hard as he can but obviously his base is, is is injured he can't draw the power from his legs like and he you know, usually can and then there it is on that bad knee tried to hit the buckshot but not having any of it gets off of him oh manages to get it buckshot apply he hits the buckshot can he get over there crawl over there jeter is down but here comes wait somebody who, out, who is that wait a minute Wait a minute, what is this? Billy Buck hit the buckshot, super kick, was inches away from victory there. And gets saved here. Billy Buck will pick up the win by disqualification, but unfortunately, title can only change hands via pinfall or submission. Billy Buck has not moved since that cutter. He has not moved an inch. And you could hear the anarchy crowd there just chanting and Jeter saying he needed help to beat Billy Buck here. Wait a minute. I believe it's Adrian Hawkins. A landmark legend in his own right. Grabbing the Southern Fried Heavyweight Championship from ringside. And Billy Buck off on one knee here. Trying to get back to his feet after taking out. And now, hits the breaker to the face. And now, Adrian Hawkins standing tall with the championship in hand. Wants a piece of Billy Buck. And just tossing the championship on to the back of Billy Buck. Uh...
and his opponent. From Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 181 pounds. He's got that big Duncan energy, Duncan Mitchell. And more action underway here as Jazar takes on that big Duncan energy and Duncan Mitchell here, one-on-one -on -one competition here at Anarchy. Jazar, the last time we saw him was in that ladder match at Hardcore Hell where he was unfortunately sent through a ladder, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, sent through a ladder. Yeah, I must say, there was a, also Duncan Mitchell. Both of these competitors were fighting for that championship opportunity that we're going to see here a little bit later tonight here on Anarchy. But now we have Duncan Mitchell, that big Duncan Energy, a graduate of the Nightmare Factory, now in action here, using everything he can against the big, strong Jazar here. Jazar may not be very tall, but he's got an incredibly powerful base. I mean, he might have the strongest legs here. When you want to talk about strong legs, that drop kick hitting him right on the mouth. And we've, and we've seen it many a times in action here. Drops it out. Oh, what a bulldog with a little extra spike on the end there. Is that going to be it quickly? One, two. Two and a half there. Already this early on in the match, Duncan bringing the energy, bringing in just the aggression, taking down not even remotely scared by the size of Jazar. And now, but again, problem here is that weight disadvantage here. Duncan here just, uh, just under 200 pounds. I mean, you know, Jazar around about 360, doubling the weight there. Again, going to be hard for Duncan Mitchell to lift him up for any sort of like big power moves. Meanwhile, Jazar using that size and strength to his advantage here. Oh, oh my good lord. lord. Just crushing him against that second rope. Like I said earlier, the, the, the sturdy base of Jazar ramming into the back of Duncan Mitchell. That's like having a semi truck. Yeah, I just mean. Just running to your back. We, we talk about the power that our Anarchy Heavyweight Champion Jeter brings to the ring. Jazar is probably not too far behind him, if not on the same level as Jeter and power that he can use in his ring. Jazar picking Duncan up with ease and slamming him down. It is absolutely. Every checking on du uh, Duncan. Yeah, just slamming him, trying to take any sort of life out of him. Jesus. <laughs> Did you see that elbow right there? That is such a hard shot by Jazar. Looks like trying to knock Duncan Mitchell out for the victory here. And again, hard scoop slam right back to the center of the ring. And now. Jazar setting up. Hits him in the ring, goes, hooks the leg. Only a two count. Jazar upset by the fact that that was not enough to put him away. I think Jazar expected a much easier fight than this. Yeah, more than likely here in this case. But Duncan. As we've seen Duncan Mitchell many a times here, he has that big Duncan energy, and he's used it time and time again to come back into the match matches here. And now, Did you hear the sound of that shot to the body in a second time as well. Yeah, he's doing whatever he can at this point just to try to create some sort of separation, but Jazar's just sitting there and taking every bit of it and dishing it back out as quickly as he can. Oh, my goodness. Did you see Jazar's head reel back the kick right to the jaw? Just if the kick wasn't bad enough, the whiplash. Yeah, the whiplash alone might have knocked Jazar out, but for the first time, 
We see Jazar really down on, uh, down in the ring here as Duncan Mitchell trying to find some way to get back in this matchup. I think he's found that way in the landmark faithful fully behind him now. Big clothesline not able enough to topple Jazar. The second one still not doing it. He's going to go for it again. Ducks the clothesline and now sling blade. He's finally able to topple the large man. Goes for down two. And again, the sling blade only brings a two count. Duncan's going to have to bring more energy, more fire, if he wants to beat Jazar here in this, in this matchup here. The first step was taking Jazar down. The second step is keeping him down. That's probably a, a harder task than the first. And now, as Jazar set up middle of the ring, thinking maybe trying to, maybe trying to go for some sort of slam. Slam here, but not getting any of it. Jazar just straight up just beating the live out of him and saying, no, you're not getting this today. But here he comes, full head of steam. Duncan stuns him. And now hits another kick right to the face. Duncan's looking to go from the top. Uh-oh. Exposing that knee now. What could he be thinking? Maybe going for a... Looking to reuse that knee to shot. So it sets him up. There it is, flying knee from the top rope. Will this be enough? Hooks the leg, one, two, three, that's it. Here is your winner, Duncan Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you that I had a new title in store. And today is the day. Feast your eyes on the five-star MVP Landmark Championship. It's, a, it's beautiful. And what's even more beautiful is this particular championship comes with its own set of rules. Whether it be a standard one fall, ladder match, lumberjack match, jello jacuzzi match, whatever it is, this particular title should the match not be decided by pinfall or submission, will have its own set of three judges to determine the winner whether there's no pinfall or submission. Three judges at the end of this match will determine each and every five-star MVP championship winner. And folks, well, I couldn't think of a better time to do our very first five-star MVP match for this belt right here, right now. opponent <laughs> ladies and gentlemen he is the black hand of Tantra. This is the atrocity. Cruel. Wait a minute, here we go. Oh, for the match it even gets underway. Cruel just clearing the ring of the program here as he beats down on Brock the Croc Johnston here before this MVP championship match gets underway here. 
And here we go, folks. Main event time here at Anarchy Wrestling. The new five-star MVP championship up for grabs here as the last television champion here in Anarchy, Prime the Croc Johnson takes on the monster Cruel, and Cruel already making an impact in this one. You know, Gentry, when I signed Cruel to come in here and fight, I I didn't deal with him directly. I was dealing with his people. Obviously, he's got somebody to handle his business for him. I had no idea how much of a monster oh, this guy goodness. actually is. My goodness, did you hear the crack as Hunter James Skulls went off the I, I, sit down. I'm supposed sit to be down. impartial. I'm supposed to be an impartial judge here. I'm sorry, I saw. Hunter James's face ricochet off that barricade. I was very excited, but I will. Mr. O'Rourke, you have my word. I will judge this match according to what happens in this match. I am a fair and impartial judge. Well, that's very good. Let's try to be objective in this, but you know what? I'm not going to lie when I say I got a little bit of joy out of that myself. Yeah, and again, as Mr. O'Rourke explained, oh, what a devastating shot there by Cruel <laughs> on the body of Proc the Croc Johnston here. As Mr. O'Rourke said, three judges will be at ringside judging, ev determining every winner That's of right. the MVP five-star championship here oh. in our hierarchy. And we have the honor here of being the three judges here in our first contest here, myself, Commissioner O'Rourke, and Mr. Hankins here of the Undeniable. Well, I figured the, what, the first set of judges would be, you know, all, my, all the higher-ups in the business. Who better to make the judgment call? And as this, uh, this championship progresses and evolves, we can uh, adjust accordingly, but I, I thought it was a fantastic idea. And, and as for me, you know, for this to be the last time that we ever see the television title, especially special for me to be here, 77 days I held that That's title, exactly best wrestler right. on television. So it is fitting that I am here to wave that title goodbye and bring in a new championship into these again his, we say historic landmark arena all the time however we can't let we can't lose focus on what that actually means That's that right. is a giant deal you know how hard it is to do something new in this building mr o'rourke exactly you've done a fine right. job and you know in, in my commissionership so far that's exactly what i've been striving to do and i i believe that this may exact i mean you see what it's pulling out of these two gentlemen right now the, the, the smell of a new championship is in the air, and there's probably going to be the smell of blood to follow. Let's see, but here we go. Cruel in the ring now as Proc Johnson trying to fight from his knees here, getting back, getting back to his feet, trying to do whatever he can. But it seems like the more he attacks Cruel, the more he just makes him angrier, and the stronger he hits back. That's not a position I'd like to be in, I'll tell you that. Here's what I tell you about Proc Johnson Oof. as he is, as he's kicked right in his heart. He is the beating heart of the program. You see the sophomore hijinks. You see the antics of Mason and James. However, Proc Johnston is the guy that most of the time gets in that ring and lets his talking be done in there as much as he does with his mouth at least. We go back to the Rejects Rules match where Oof. him and Tank fought one-on-one -on -one, sort of in, that, in the scrum of that of uh, Rejects Rules match there, seeing the brutality and the beating. Oh, here we go. Tank. See, this is what we're talking about. This is what we've been dealing with the entire time. Oh! If it wasn't for those sort of hijinks, as you said earlier, I don't believe Cruel would be uh, in such a, a bad way right now. But, you know, Mr. O'Rourke, what, what have you given us here? If we see those kind of hijinks going on and this match were to end at a disqualification, guess what? We have the power to make a change. We have That's the power exactly to right. set it right with our judgment. That's exactly right. The judges that we're pulling together have the ability to make an objective call that maybe the ref didn't see something or a distraction, et cetera. There's any number of reasons why all three of us right now can change the outcome of this match. And I have to tell you right now, if I had to make a decision, I know which way I would lean, but that can change with a moment's notice because that's how professional wrestling is. And I can also say I am very glad we did not have judges judging my matches for the television title because guess what? We got up to some shenanigans. The, yes. That's but I've the, turned over a new leaf. That's what I'm, uh, you know, that's why I chose you as one of they these judges, Mr. Hankins. Referees. And now up to a nine count, and there's a ten count. Referees calling for the bell. Both of these men to the outside here. Wait. That was a decision? 
I'm gonna say it's a double count out there. go to the judges. Unmute. Ladies and gentlemen, as the first decision of the judge panel, we have decided collectively that we're going to let this match continue. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. It's no disqualification. Ring the bell. And as the decision was made, Cruel comes flying through the ring, takes out the entire program. Holy smokes, I wasn't even finished stating the, the, the decision. And Cruel just went right back into action. That's what you were talking about, Matt. The split decision, the, the change that can happen on a dime here well, in the I Landmark think Arena. I think Cruel operates under no disqualification rules literally every day of his life. I don't think he understands that there are rules. And you, you saw from the moment he got into this match, he did not stop. He was not dissuaded by the program being out there. Went right to the walk, right to the ring and got to business. That's exactly right. And now again, now Ooh. the match contested now under no disqualification. Somebody must get a pinfall or submission in order to become the new five-star MVP champion here in Anarchy Wrestling. And Cruel looking to be the big favorite here at this point. Predator stalking the prey. I know proc has got a lot of a fight in him. Oh, right into that shoulder but there. But the sheer size alone of Cruel, one, two. Oh. Only a kick out of there, two. I thought that was it. I thought that was it. Uh, okay. what, what else does Proc have in him? I don't know how you kick out of, out of several of the things he's kicked out of. That, that talks about the heart in the young man. And when that young man finally breaks free of this program, he is going to be something to behold. I believe anybody who breaks away from the program will be something to behold Absolutely. if they just made that decision. You know, we saw Scott Mason out here earlier uh, talking oh. about recruiting. Uh, so it, they are looking to expand the program. But Brock Johnston has got to be thinking about getting away from that thing and take, going his own road. And to say that Proc Johnston, uh, with a big shoulder tackle of his own there. I believe the only thing he's thinking about right now is survival, guys. Mm-hmm. Proc Johnston, easily the five-star MVP of the program himself, wants the championship to prove it here as well. But again, what does he have to do to take out a monster like Cruel? Well, guys, I feel like we've made a good decision here. No DQ is the way to go here. I've got some other business to attend to. I will be watching on the monitor. If we need to make some more judgment, I will be back. But i got to go take some other business. Yes, sir, Mr. Okay. Hankins. Thank you for your time. And now we see Proctor Johnston, both these men, tired, beaten, battered, both of them. Again, wanting to be, have the right to put their names in the annals of history here at Anarchy Wrestling as the first ever five-star MVP champ. Oh, fallaway slam. As a beautiful fallaway slam by Cruel. But now, oh! oh! Proc hits the spear. Proc hits the spear. And that looks like it might have taken something out of Cruel. He's not getting up as fast as he was before. That might have act Proc's athleticism might have actually paid off right now. And the, uh, you hear the landmark faithful here chanting Cruel's name, trying to will him back in this matchup. Again, history on the line here to become the first five-star MVP champion. Referee now has both now up to a six count. One of these men got to get close. back to their feet. This is close. Up to seven. Both men up to their feet. And now Proc Johnston right back. No fear. Willing to take whatever shots he can right to Cruel. Cruel's just absorbing all those hits. Oh, oh. It's through. Oh, oh what a German suplex the by The display Proc. of strength by Proc. Jeez and, Louise. And a big spine buster right there. Mr. Johnston and now trying to figure out a way. What does he have to do now to put Cruel away and win the title? Where is he going? What is he thinking? Well, I don't know if the program's got a silver bullet or some garlic or something. I, that's about all I got left to, to take count Cruel. Maybe daylight, but it's already, the sun's gone down. I don't know if we've got much else to go by. Yeah, Brock Johnson now in rare oh. territory for him. Off the top row. Oh! 
Goes for a no! splash, but Cruel catches him. Look, look at the look on Brock's face. He was not expecting that at all. And now and here up, comes yo, the program. Here comes the rest of the program. Uh, we decided no DQ. I thought that would have been for the best. But now, wait a minute. Cruel right there, the big choke slam to Scott Mason. Beating them down, oh. a hard shot right to Hunter James. Oh, God. And now, oh, oh good night. Here comes Xavier. Xavier. Hi What's there. he doing out here? Reyes now. Maybe reconsidering Scott Mason's offer. Now hits him. Yuri, oh. Yurinagi planted right there. Wait a minute. No, uh, not like this. Come on. This is not what we had in mind, folks, when we made the no DQ. Johnson on the snap. Oh, big splash hooks the leg. One, two, three. We oh. new champion. Oh, I'm not gonna hear the end of this. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match and new five-star MVP champion. Brock Johnston. Gentry, I am not going to hear the end of this. No, neither one of us is going to be able to hear the end of this at this point. But a pinfall was made. The match stands. We have the new first ever five-star MVP champion, Brock the Croc Johnston. I and the program once again with more gold in their career. Gentry, promoter. I think I got... Uh, you're in I got some calls to make. Five star. Thank you. MVP champion, Brock Johnston. It took four men to beat Cruel, and in the end, the program re regains new gold and stands stronger than ever now in Anarchy Wrestling. For my broadcast partner, Blake Blackwell, I'm Michael Gentry. From all of us here at Anarchy Wrestling, thank you for so much, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thing of this is over here, but now all men of the program now coming after it. Now, Cruel absolutely just rising from the dead, if you will, taking out the entire program by himself. As him, as him and Reyes go, rolls out to the outside, Cruel and Reyes just beating the ever-living ever living hell out of one another here. And now, these two just fighting it out, trying to, trying to create some sort of separation here. The referee's out trying to break up this brawl, but they're just going at it, folks. Now even, it's hard to see off camera, but most, more, more stars coming out to try to break up the fight here. You see off your lower left-hand corner of the screen there, the locker room is emptying out, trying to separate Reyes and Cruel here. These two men look like they're ready to fight each other to the death here. And the program retreats to the back as we finally get some separation here. Folks, the way Cruel's brushed the loose in here, Cruel's going after him. Oh, folks, he's got more to Join us next time for more Anarchy Wrestling.